Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. So I'm going to talk to you about careers in the arts because I teach in the School of Fine Arts. But before the, I do that, I want to maybe give you just a little bit of my personal background because I think it's relevant to what maybe your students are going through. I'm originally Canadian. Uh, actually, I'm still Canadian. Um, <laughs> you never lose that. You're always Canadian. Um, I was origi originally born in Edmonton, which is very hard for me to admit the way that the Oilers have been playing the last few years. Um, it's embarrassing. I think, think I'm going to start claiming Toronto. Um, <laughs> oh, that's not much better either, is it? No. <laughs> um, but I ended up doing my undergraduate degree at the University of Lethbridge, which is in Alberta. And then once I had completed that, I decided to go to the U.S. to do graduate school. And I did my graduate degree and my doctoral degree both in the U.S. So I am very similar to some of your students that you may be talking with and dealing with now who are, are thinking of making that transition to the U.S. system. So once we are finished with this panel and we break out and are able to talk to each other more on one-on-one, -on -one, if you have any specific questions um, that you would like to ask me that maybe your own students would have, you know, what made me decide to go to the U.S. for college? What was some of the best advice or what were some of the difficulties that I dealt with as a student transitioning to that system, a Canadian student? Um, I'd be happy to talk about any of that. The other little thing that I want to plug, I've been on the, the Grand Canadian Tour this whole week and in Vancouver and Calgary I talked a lot about the NCAA as well. Um, so I have a pretty good knowledge of that and and once we break out of this panel and, and are talking one-on-one, -on -one, if you want to ask me questions about um, transitioning or being eligible for the NCAA system, I can do that as well. But let me get down to what I really want to talk about, careers in the arts. And the one, the, what I'm not going to talk about are those traditional careers that you probably are well familiar with, you know, being an art educator or perhaps you know, working for a gallery or a museum maybe being a graphic designer or a working artist. What I really want to talk about is being an artist entrepreneur and the creative economy. And most economists agree that the, grow the fastest growing sector of the economy is going to be the creative economy in the next 10 years. And when I talk about the creative economy, I'm basically referring to this idea and this recognition by most 21st century industries that creativity and innovation are going to be increasingly important as we move forward in the next 10 to 15 years. There's another significant piece to this as well that is happening in the changing nature of the workforce because there's this thing that's coming called the boom shift. Does anybody, has anybody heard? It sounds like it's the new single by Drake, right? The boom shift, but it's not. It's a reference to the fact that most of the baby, baby boomer generation are going to be retiring in the next 10 years. And the problem is, is that there are not enough Gen Xers, my generation, to replace the baby boomers. So for your students, for the millennials, this is going to create an amazing window of opportunity to be able to launch into these careers that are looking at creative and innovation or launch into more upper administration uh, positions without going through the long, um, you know, the long path of gaining experience like the baby boomer generation or the Gen Xers did. So that's a really exciting opportunity for your students, I think, that's going to be coming on the horizon. It, some good examples of how you know, the artist entrepreneur is impacting the, the economy as a whole or making its presence known in the creative economy is um, organizations or companies like Airbnb, which was started by two art students that graduated from RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design. Once they graduated, they came together and had this idea of starting this company, which eventually transformed into Airbnb. Another good example is Intel has hired Will I Am as their director of creative innovation. Wouldn't that be awesome to have on your business card? Right, so these are things that you can be telling to your students. And there's different ways that the education, uh, the field of education is adapting and preparing for this boom shift that's going to happen and this um, uh, new um, presence of the creative economy in the, in the overall economy. And I can just give some examples from my own institution. We have an arts entrepreneur certificate that can basically be added on to any degree that we offer. 
And it's going to give students more experience in both of those things, in, in entrepreneurial acumen, but also creative and innovative skills as well. Another thing that my institution is doing, and you'll find this with many of the institutions you'll talk to, talk to today, is we are starting a center for creati creativity and entrepreneurship. And the whole idea is to help facilitate students to be able to move into the creative economy. So it's creating experiences, different kinds of opportunities that will allow them and better position them to be a part of this burgeoning creative community. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, we have to keep it brief, so I'm going to stop there. But if you have any more questions about this, I would love to uh, talk to you one-on-one -on -one when we start our roundtable. All right, thank you. Thank you.